Today we're looking at this 2009 Maserati Gran Turismo S. The S, as you can guess, means sport. So it's a sport model. It's got the 4.7 liter Ferrari derived V8 with a little bit more power than the standard 4.2 liter. So it's got 433 horsepower and 361 pound feet of torque, up a little bit from the regular 405 and 340 numbers. Uh, of course, also being a sport model, it's got bigger brakes, different suspension. And this particular car, somewhere option with a ZF six speed transmission, this one actually has the F1 transmission in it. So it's got the clutch and everything too. It's got paddles just like anyone, any other one would. It drives a little bit different with that uh, F1 transmission. This is the second year of the Gran Turismo being out. Uh, they definitely changed the cars an immense amount from the previous generation of the, the 4200 series of cars. Uh, the previous, like the Grand Sports and whatnot, were much smaller. They kind of had a much shorter rear end. This, they definitely extended the wheelbase quite a bit, made it look a lot longer, a little bit sleeker, a lot lower to the ground looking too. Uh, it's got a uh, much bigger engine bay too from the looks of it when uh, when you have the hood up. Just a very, very different uh, very different change from the previous cars and I think it looks really good. Maybe uh, a little bit funny to some people because it's got like this weird nose that kind of comes out on it. Uh, but it does have the really nice trident in, in the grille there that just stands out. It's got very different headlights as well. Of course, they, uh, they really mold into the body there. Uh, to kind of get that, that pointed nose that it has. And uh, one of the weird things about the door handles on these is that it's actually got an electronic release and a mechanical release. I think that's a little bit strange. I think that uh, if Maserati, when they were building this car, they are like, you know what, we're going to put a backup system in there because we don't think the electronic release is going to work all the time. You know, maybe they should have just stuck with a mechanical one. Now around to the back of the Gran Turismo S, we can see the, the huge change in styling from the previous generation, like I had mentioned before. Uh, definitely a lot more rounder at the back, a little bit more swoopy. It's got a really, really nice deck lid that, uh, that goes up. It's almost got like its own built-in kind of deck lid spoiler, uh, but it's all molded as part of the body. Uh, almost kind of reminds me of what the M4 has from factory as well. They have a two-piece taillight in this. The previous generation only had a single taillight. That's a little bit different, and it definitely curves around the body, whereas the previous generation went right around the, the rear body edge. Uh, with the sport model as well, besides all the other things, it does have a sport exhaust. So when you put it into sport mode, it definitely does get a little bit louder, a little bit throatier. I think it sounds fantastic because it is that Ferrari Drive V8. So it just sounds perfect. What you will see is a lot of vehicles that are in the North American market will have a lot of amber lights all over the place on the car. This one doesn't have any of that. It's all clear markers with amber bulbs inside or amber LEDs. So. It looks way cleaner. I know with a lot of the Porsche enthusiasts, they actually change out a lot of those lights, those markers and, and whatnot to go to the clear lens. On this, you don't even have to worry about that. And looking at those door handles, I actually kind of show it to you a little bit here. So if you go towards the front, it's got the electronic release. And of course you can see the, uh, the window. It's being a Maserati. As you can see, when I actually hit the first stage here, it actually drops the window down like it's going to open the door, but for some reason this is actually acting up, which is very Italian of it. But if you just go a little bit further back, you press it and the door opens with mechanical release. Works excellent. So here we are on the inside of this 2009 Gran Turismo S. And uh, you know, it, it's, it's a fairly comfortable spot to be. It's just, the, the downside is it's a little bit underwhelming. Maserati did update these periodically through the generations, but they, there, there wasn't any major changes that were made. And this one, there's just, there's not a lot going on. It's comfortable. The seats are nicely bucketed, nicely formed. They hold you well. Um, but I mean, it's, they're, they're fairly, uh, fairly basic looking, I suppose. The other thing that's super uniquely Maserati, or at least it seems to be, especially with this generation, is that they have a number pad, like a telephone at home. <laughs> so you can actually like dial your phone number that you're trying to reach uh, right on the center console in, through the radio. So it's not like a typical thing where the Bluetooth comes up and it shows all of your contacts. Um, it, it, it does do that as well in the infotainment, but you can actually dial a phone number like it's a like an old school phone. These are hard buttons. It feels like a like a Motorola from the early 2000s, 
So kind of unique, I guess, in that regard. And something very Ferrari that it kind of plagues everything from this earlier generation. Uh, Ferrari and Maserati wanted to give more of that, again, that luxurious feel to the interior. And part of that was by putting this coating on all of the touch points, all of the buttons, that gave it sort of a, a little bit of a velvety feel from factory, which is great. The problem is, is that that only lasts for the first couple of years, the first few thousand miles, and then it starts to just get sticky and tacky and awful. Um, this car, just like any of the others of this generation, are plagued with that issue. So there is a process to be able to remove this coating on all the buttons, but uh, it, it is a bit labor intensive. <laughs> Overall though, it's comfortable in here. I don't, uh, you know, I don't feel cramped at all. There's plenty of room. This is a two plus two, or realistically it is a four seater. There are fully functional rear seats in this. There, there's plenty of space. Like it's not, it, I, I would equate it to maybe a little less space than maybe the CL63 that we, re we uh, reviewed earlier. But otherwise it's still a, it's a fairly comfortable vehicle. The seats are very adjustable, which is really cool. You can, you can put these things any which way you want to be able to get really, really, uh, have a really driver centric experience. The uh, steering uh, column is completely electric and it does when you, I just had the key in, took it out. But when I opened the door, the steering wheel moves to let you out, kind of standard issue. Um, very adjustable and, and ergonomic in that regard. Paddles are really ex exactly where you would expect them to be. And in this particular car with the F1 transmission, I don't know that you would want to ever drive it not in full manual mode, especially for clutch reasons, uh, in order to kind of preserve the clutch. You wanna be in sport mode and full manual as much as possible because that way the clutch isn't slipping, it's engaging really aggressively, which might not be everybody's cup of tea, but you're gonna get a lot more miles out of the clutch by doing that. So unlike a Ferrari, uh, this car does have cup holders and they are useful. At, at least they seem to be the appropriate size to be able to hold a, a regular sized water bottle. The idea with this Gran Turismo, Gran Touring, that's what it stands for. Um, so they are designed to be driven long distances. And that, that was the intention behind these were for you know road trip cars, touring cars. Um, so, you know, you'd want to have all the little features that would, the, the little creature comforts you'd expect to have in a vehicle you're doing longer distances with. It has excellent trunk space as well. Something that's really interesting though, is that there's more cup holders in the center console. And it's a little insert, little rubber insert that just sits in the center console that apparently you can put more cups in there or like maybe cans of Coke. I, I'm really not sure what that's about. That's a, that is that is uniquely Italian. Um, I can't say I've ever seen that in any other vehicle before, and I'm not really sure why you'd want to do that because this isn't like it's a cooled space. It's not a not a climate controlled uh, center console. So, not exactly sure the purpose behind that, but just something unique and quirky. <laughs> It is us. Nice. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, new equipment time. So yeah. Playing around with this new camera. We're going vlog style, so we're doing this a little bit differently than having it mounted on the windshield as before, so we can kind of show everybody around a little bit more. Yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah. So the car is warming up. We put it into sport mode, taking it out of auto mode. So it's full manual right now. Oh. And it's gonna go into a honestly, I can't remember what the mode is called. It's gonna come up on the dash as soon as the car warms up enough. Mm. Uh, so we'll touch on that when we get to it. But the car's warming up, so we'll get going and uh, just kind of take it light. Kind of take it light to start. January 1st in Edmonton, not a drop of snow on the ground. Drop of snow? Did I just say drop of snow? <laughs> Yeah, I meant flake, I guess. Anyway. Oh, I love this car. Yeah, this particular car is 43,000 miles on it. It is a US vehicle, so this was originally sold, I think, in Florida, I believe? Yeah, I don't remember now. Yeah. But we've got the car facts that shows all that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it just sounds 
<laughs> That's yeah. so good. Absolutely sounds like an Italian V8, and there really is nothing like the sound of an Italian V8. They really are in a league of their own. Yeah, it, it reminds me of driving an F430. Yep. Uh, in just the sound. Because obviously this car is very different from an F430. Yeah. Except this, like the steering wheel and the paddles do actually feel very much like an F430, which is, which is very fantastic. Yeah. Uh, because those cars feel incredible to drive. I think that's my favorite Ferrari that I've been in. A bit bigger steering wheel in this for sure. Yeah, a little like bit the, bigger. The one in the 430 is a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. A lot more, uh, but as a result, the steering is also a lot more twitchy in those cars, <laughs> especially because there's no weight over the front end. Suspension doesn't feel that tight though, like it's not uncomfortable. It's definitely sporty, but it's not, again, we're kind of in that same M4 territory, I feel like. Yeah, it's, it's not uncomfortable. It is, a, it is a GT car, that is the whole point of it, so yeah. it still have, it has to be comfortable. These downshifts are crisp. And yeah, this is just a factory sport exhaust. So this is not, there's no, uh, no aftermarket bits on this at all, actually. This is a completely bone stock car. of just being in here moving you don't hear anything like you don't hear any weird noises or anything that shouldn't be there it feels really tight especially for a car that's 15 years old like that's yeah that's pretty amazing and a 15 year old italian car yeah <laughs> especially that yeah because <laughs> you expect usually like a, a, I hate to say german car yep uh very refined very good tend to uh, last a little. Yeah, they tend to last a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yes, this car only has 43,000 miles, but again, it's Italian. Yeah. Beautiful day today. Yeah. It's actually getting uh, quite comfortable in here for temperature, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> Helps if you put it in gear. <laughs> shifts are very violent like there's nothing it's certainly not like a dual clutch where you get that nice smooth transition between shifts it, it is like driving a manual um, obviously the shifts are a lot faster than in a manual but yeah that clutch disengagement re-engagement is very yeah. obvious it's MCS 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 it goes up and it, uh, it comes ah, up and right above sport right yeah. okay so we're up to temperature now so that's a good sign recommend with Maserati is trying to compare it to a lot of the German cars, especially 911s, because those cars are 100% of the time going to be a better car. However, you don't necessarily get the same sound, you don't get the same feel as you do for an Italian car. Yeah. So if you want something that's going to be a little bit different, you're probably going to hate it some days. I completely, completely think everyone should have one at some point. Yep, agreed. Agreed. They're worth the problem 
Yes. <laughs> Damn. And how's it feel? Like at speed, you know, obviously we're not we're not doing above the speed limit here. We're keeping it keeping it tame. Uh, it might look like we're going pretty quick, but really that's just it's just for the video. Um, so how, how does it feel like at uh, at highway speed? feels really nice and composed. It yeah. really does. Uh, it does, in some ways, if you're not used to it, I have driven this car a reasonable amount. Mm -hmm. It can feel a little bit twitchy at times, but I think that's more the road than anything. Because uh, on our highways, they're all asphalt. <laughs> yeah. So you get a lot of rutting and stuff from semis and, and bigger trucks and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really where that comes from. All, all the rest of it, it's, it's very good. How is it as a passenger? Oh man, I mean, it's uh, it, it is perfectly comfortable in here, and uh, yeah, it does. It certainly doesn't feel like it's getting squirrely or sketchy or um, you know losing losing any bit of the road. It feels very composed and, and um, um, planted the whole way the whole way through, all the way to 7,500 RPM and <laughs> get some of it with the window rolled down here. surprisingly good value for money I think anyway oh yeah I, I completely agree yeah the only downside to this car is that one transmission because your repair cost for most things is not bad except if you need to do a clutch yeah it is definitely not the cheapest thing to do yeah so I think that is the biggest downfall of this particular car only with the f1 though if yeah. you did do the ZF if you found a car with the ZF six-speed a lot more reliable, but just then you don't. From my understanding, you don't have an S model. No. Or you're looking yep. at a newer car, which is more expensive. Yeah. So if you're okay buying this car, you just have to understand that you are going to pay more for a clutch replacement. However, yep. you are still cheaper than buying a newer car. Oh, by a lot. That is kind of the beauty of this generation, is that uh, Maserati's pretty well known for depreciating quite rapidly, but uh, I mean, this thing has pretty well bottomed out. They, there is not much more to go, so um, you, you know, you'd be hard pressed to lose money on these cars, I think, um, but they are driver vehicles. I mean, you're not buying this as a, uh, um, a collector, you know, you're, you're buying it to drive it. You're buying it to really enjoy it. All right, so that concludes today's video on this 2009 Gran Turismo S. We hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for sticking around and watching to the very end. We really do appreciate that. I want to give another shout out to Toro Automotive, whose space we're currently occupying and whose beautiful vehicle we've borrowed. Uh, this car is for sale, so if you're interested at all, check out the link in the description. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.